CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... proverb. Decrease they may, but alas, everything is relative. The advantages of marriage are manifold. The union of two people by their mutual commitment to one another is a beautiful thing. It can engender in us a new sense of responsibility. But there are crimes within marriage as well, some of which appear in the statute books and some of which don't. Jack, dear, I'm so glad you're home. Uh, Susan, what are you doing here, in in this house? Hmm, this is such an attractive house. I think you owe it to me, don't you? What's that sheet of paper you've got in your hand? It's a list I've been making, a list of things I'm going to uh, want from you. It looks long. It is. It includes just about everything I can think of. Except a divorce. drama, Double Take, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Percy Granger and stars Marion Seldes and Patricia Elliott. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Two people take a vow to live together for life, for better or worse. They do well to realize that all successful marriages are built on compromise. Now, compromise is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, considering how rarely we are 100% in the right on any given issue, compromise is really a virtue. But there are certain necessities... We might call them necessities of the soul, which we ought never to compromise. For to surrender them can only mean trouble. We're in an affluent suburb of Philadelphia. Morning, Joe. Morning, Ellie. Is your husband ready to go? He'll be right down. Come in. Thanks. Like some coffee? No, thanks. My nerves are on edge. This breakfast meeting is with our biggest client. Oh, I'm sure everything will go splendidly. Oh, by the way, I saw the review of your latest novel in the papers this morning. Congratulations. Thank you. Looks like you've got another bestseller on your hands. Yes, I suppose so. Well, you don't seem very happy about it. Oh, I'm afraid I'm building an indestructible reputation as a writer of gothic romances. Oh, is that so bad? Oh, yes, it is if you have more serious things in mind. Oh, you and Jack have had that argument again, huh? Every time I publish a book, I feel I've dug another foot down in my own grave. Old Jack loves the idea of being married to a writer as long as she doesn't write anything too artsy. <laughs> so difficult keeping what you hope is your best work in a drawer. But our relationship is far more important to me than my writing, and if it requires sacrifice, well, the bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the love. Yes. Joe, is that you? Anyway, if the truth be known, Joe, I'd be terrified of showing the contents of that drawer to anyone. What if my best work isn't any good? Mm. Well, the two of you in secret conference. Jack, you ready to go? All set. Jack. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. This breakfast meeting has me in such a stir, I forgot to kiss my own wife goodbye. Uh, Pack my suitcase today, will you, Allie? I'm flying out to Seattle first thing in the morning. All right, dear. And have a good day. Are you Eleanor Reynolds? Yes, I am. My name is Susan Powell. Well, yes? I'd like to speak to you. What about? 
Uh, could I at least come in? I'm rather busy at the moment. I've come a long way to see you, Miss Mountjoy. What? Well, that is the name you write under, isn't it? Charlotte Mountjoy. How did you find that out? My publishers are under strict orders not to divulge my real name to anyone. I found someone at your publishers who was willing to give it to me. For a small price. Are you a reporter? No, I'm not a reporter, Mrs. Reynolds, and I'm getting tired of this charade. Now, may we speak? Well, come in. You seem to be under the impression that I should know you, Mrs. Powell. Susan Powell. Now, you've said you've come a long way. Yes, from Seattle. Oh, you've been there, of course. No, I haven't. Why do you ask that? Because you write about it so convincingly in your latest novel, Double Take. Oh, my husband spends a good deal of time out there on business. He's told me a lot about the city. The rest I got from reading. Oh, and we have even more in common than I thought. What do you mean? You were both married to businessmen. You still haven't told me. And I am also a writer. Oh. Oh, I see. Not as experienced as you, perhaps. And not yet as good. That comes with time. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Well, have you... Have you published anything? Yes. Well, what is it you want? You've come a great distance. You've bribed someone for my name and address. You, you tell me you're a young writer. What have you got in your handbag? Is this a manuscript you want me to read? Or is it contacts you're after? Or advice? Or a, an endorsement? Or... Actually, Mrs. Reynolds, it's none of those. I came to compliment you on your new novel. Oh? Oh. Yes. I read it with absolute fascination. It helped me spellbound from beginning to end. Well, thank you. I can only say that I am in awe of what you've done. Oh, thank you very much. You must forgive me for what I said just now. If I jump to conclusions... Frankly, I... Eleanor Reynolds, alias Charlotte Mountjoy, I don't care what you said. You were right about one thing. I do have a copy of a manuscript in my handbag. You might be interested in taking a look at it. A Secret Life. Hmm. That's a nice title. Obviously, you didn't think it was good enough. Pardon? You don't have to worry that I'll ask you to help me find the publisher for it. It's already been published. It was serialized in a local Seattle literary magazine called The Amanuensis, as I'm sure you know. No, I don't think I've ever heard of it. Mm, but you said your husband travels to Seattle on business? Yes, but he never buys me literary magazines. What makes you think I've read your story? How can you pretend to be so innocent? I think, Mrs. Powell, I'll have to ask you to leave. No, not yet. Because you're the well-known Charlotte Mountjoy, and I'm a nobody, you'll make a fortune with the story you stole from me while I'll be left with nothing. You're accusing me of stealing your story? How dare you? Here. Here. Are all six issues of the magazine in which my novel appears. It is detail for detail the same story you tell in double take. Secret Life by Susan Powell. It's my first novel. I thought if it was well-received locally, I might have interested a major publisher, but now... Oh, Powell, I... I assure you, I did not plagiarize your novel. You expect me to believe it's just a coincidence that we both wrote stories about a man who leads two separate lives in two different cities? But it is possible for two people to have the same idea. It certainly happened before. I'm sorry for you that mine happened to be published first. You can stop pretending, Mrs. Reynolds. I'm not going to try suing you. I just want to hear you admit the truth. For my own satisfaction. Now, just a minute. I'll not have you thinking such things about me. Let me see those magazines again. All right, now. Is this issue the first installment? Yes. All right, now look here. It's dated October of last fall. <laughs> if instead of wasting your money, bribing some unscrupulous employee at my publishers, you had simply spoken to my editor, he could have told you that I turned in the first complete draft of my novel by November. How could I steal your story when at that time five-sixths of it haven't even been published? But you must have. The details. You even used the same cities I did, Seattle and Philadelphia. But that's because Philadelphia happens to be where we live, and Seattle is where my husband travels to frequently on business. Your book is based on your husband, then? Well, no, of course not. It's an idle fantasy, but the idea came to me one morning when he was away... And I wondered, as I often do, what he was doing at that particular moment. And I let my mind wander, and I concocted that whole story about a man with two wives. It 
a perfectly silly novel, which, of course, will make me a great deal of money, that I do not, as you can see, need. I am sorry for you, though. I mean, a writer's life is hard enough without having to cope with breaks like this. Honey, that's how I got the idea, too. My husband also travels here to Philadelphia, as a matter of fact. He's away from home nearly half the year. I sometimes wonder why more housewives don't turn to writing. But anyway, I hope you're satisfied that I did not plagiarize your novel. That's not fair. I worked so hard. And I'd have nothing to show for it. That's not true. You always learn something from everything you write. Now, are you sure you wouldn't like some coffee? Maybe a drink? No, no. Thank you. I, I should go. Do you know anyone here in Philadelphia? No. Well, except my husband, but uh, he's here on business. Oh, you came with him? Oh, no. No, he's been here nearly a month now. He's coming home tomorrow. Ah, so you'll fly back together. Oh, no, no. I I'll go back tonight by myself. Why? Well, I, I don't know how to get in touch with him here. I, I, I don't know where he stays when he's here. Well, that's very odd. Yeah. He doesn't tell me much about his business life. Well, you should ask. Oh, too boring. No, you'd be surprised. <laughs> Who knows? You might get a novel out of it. Well, perhaps our husbands will be on the same plane. Jack is flying to Seattle tomorrow, too. Your husband's name is Jack. Huh? So is mine. Really? Well, Jack, uh, my Jack is flying on Alhambra Airlines Flight 101. That's Jack's flight, too. He always complains about how boring these cross-country flights are. Perhaps with your permission, I could tell him to keep an eye out for your husband. By all means, Jack would love the company. What does he look like? He's six feet two, rugged features, quite handsome, actually. Blonde hair turning gray, 48 oh. years old. What's the matter? Well, of the man you're describing, they could almost be twins. Really? Well, here on the mantel is a photograph. It was taken a couple of years ago, but it... <gasps> Mrs. Hall, what is it? Uh, the man in, in that picture, he's your husband? Yes. Well, uh, perhaps you'd be interested to see a picture of my husband, Mrs. Reynolds. I, I believe I have one here in my purse. Well, yes, yes, here. Jack, your husband. It's not possible. I think I will take that drink after all. This isn't possible. It's a very interesting turn, isn't it? As one of the characters in our novels might say, I came here expecting to find a plagiarist, and instead, we've uncovered a bigamist. I can't believe it. It must be a question of mistaken identities. I think that the only question, Mrs. Reynolds, is, now that we know the truth... What are we going to do about it? A humorist called bigamy a crime with a horrible penalty to mothers-in-law. But I somehow don't feel that Jack Reynolds and Jack Powell, too, since it now turns out they are one and the same person, will have nearly so much to fear from his mothers-in-law as he will from the wives themselves. Just what do the two injured ladies intend to do? We'll find out when I return with Act Two. Ambrose Bierce, in his Devil's Dictionary, defined bigamy as a mistake in taste for which the wisdom of future generations will invent a punishment called trigamy. Perhaps. But Susan Powell has no intention of waiting for others to decree Jack's punishment. Nor, as we will momentarily discover, does Ellie Reynolds. Both women are believers in the old adage, let the punishment fit the crime. I, I don't believe it. Jack? Surely you must mean that you've... Just been having an affair. Mrs. Reynolds, I am not that kind of woman. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to imply... Jack and I were married four years ago this July. I remember. That was the year he spent the entire summer in Seattle. But we've been married 15 years. How could he do such a thing? Well, men his age 
often turned to younger women to take the edge off the advancing years. I'd never considered myself old, Mrs. Powell. But don't you think that under the circumstances we can call each other by our first names? Yes, I think under the circumstances that I'd prefer it. <laughs> good. And now, Ellie, let's each pour ourselves a good stiff drink of that louse's liquor and consider just what we're going to do about this situation. You mean... It takes some kind of revenge? I certainly don't think I should just go back to Seattle and we carry on as if we knew nothing, do you? No, I guess not. I must admit, I'm such a timid soul that I probably would just carry on like nothing had happened. Ah, oh, maybe that's exactly what we should do. What? Well, carry on. As if all were normal. But that wouldn't accomplish anything. It would if we switched places. You mean... Change houses? Jack will be coming to this place tonight. This place? And flying out to Seattle tomorrow. He expects to see you here and me there. But instead he'll find <laughs> just the opposite. And we'll each pretend as if nothing's amiss. What do you think? Oh, it's positively wicked. Isn't it terrific? Yes, but what do you think he'll do? If your Jack is anything like mine, he's obsessed with his public image. His career rests on He'll it. be a nervous wreck. It'll be like a slow death. Oh, I can't wait to see the expression on his face. Come on, Ellie, show me around. Who knows, if we can pull this off, he may actually begin to think he's going crazy. And this is our cellar. You can see it's quite big. This house is very old, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's one of the original Philadelphia mainline mansions. Oh. Well, ours in Seattle is very modern. Oh, what are all these rooms here? Well, they were originally servants' quarters. See up there on the wall, there's an intercom hookup to all the rooms upstairs. But these rooms are all empty. Don't you have any servants? No. Why not? <laughs> Certainly the louse can afford them. No, that was my choice. I felt I should manage the house myself. No, I didn't know he was a louse until now. You ought to take better advantage. I would. The house he bought me in Seattle is nearly this big. that's everything. You know where the linens are kept. You've mm. seen the kitchen, the garage, the grounds. But before I go, is there anything else I should know about your house? <sighs> no. Oh, let me just dig the keys out of my pocketbook here. Oh, there is one other thing. Very important. I always have a bottle of wine on ice for Jack when he comes home. I know. White wine. I have it for him, too. <laughs> Even though I don't drink it myself. There's a wine cellar in the basement. The key is on the ledge above the furnace. All right. But make sure you prop the door open securely. Why? Well, ever since we had the last earthquake tremor, the door hasn't hung properly. It will swing shut on you if it isn't wedged, and the handle inside is broken. Jack keeps saying he'll fix it, but he never has. I actually locked myself in there once for three hours. I'll be careful. Here are the keys to the house, and oh, this is the key to the car I rented to drive in from the airport. And your return ticket. Mm, uh, right here. I think the next flight to Seattle is in an hour. Well, I'll have to hurry. I'll just pack a few things. Oh, can I send you anything? I'll, I'll call you tomorrow and tell you what clothes to send. I just had another thought. What? I think that under the circumstances, we ought to split the revenues from my new book. <laughs> well, Jack usually gets home around six. Oh, it's barely three now. I don't know how I'm going to stand it until then. If this little plan is going to succeed, we'll both have to play our parts perfectly. Well, Jack, you're home safe and sound. <sighs> Thanks for the lift, Joe. I never thought this day would end. I think we have a very satisfied client. And I think I'm sitting next to our next executive vice president. Oh, me? Ted Dempster's moving up to the board next month, and I'll be stepping into his shoes as president. And I intend to recommend you for my job. I don't know what to say, Jack. Can you come in for a drink? Oh, I'm afraid Millie's expecting me right home. We've got company coming tonight. Well, say, would you like to come? Sure, why not? I'll see how Ellie feels, and I'll give you a call. Okay. And I'm off to our Seattle office tomorrow. Jack, you're still being careful, aren't you? Oh, don't worry, Joe. Isn't there any way out of this mess you're in? 
I don't want out, Joe. It's ideal. A wife in each city. But if anyone else ever finds out... Look, look, I keep my private life out there completely divorced from my business life. But it's only now you're in line for the presidency of the firm. But no one knows about my double life except you, Joe. And you won't say anything because your promotion depends on mine. Right? <laughs> I'm home, honey. Honey? Why, you haven't called me honey in months. Hello, dear. Susan. How was your breakfast meeting this morning? Were your clients all uh, happy? How did you get here? Well, don't you remember? Joe picked you up this morning so I could use your car today, since mine's still at the garage. How do you know about... It's not your car that needed repairs. It was... Uh, I mean, Sit I down, thought... Sit dear. I'm sure it's been a long day, hasn't it? You look like you don't even know where you are. Susan. Now, just put your feet up while I pour us some wine. But you don't drink wine. Of course I do. I mean, Ellie doesn't... Ellie? Who's Ellie? Your new secretary? No. Oh, should I be jealous? Well, no. Here's your wine. Have a sip. You'll feel better. Susan, what are you doing here? Here? Well, where else should I be? What's, what's going on? What time is it, dear? It's... Uh, 6.20. Oh, oh, I have to check dinner. Just a minute. Oh, your bags are all packed for your trip to Philadelphia. We're in Philadelphia. I, I, I'm in Seattle. Uh, uh, Jack, uh, I have to go to the kitchen. You're not going anywhere until you tell me what this is all about. Uh, do you want dinner burned or not? Where's Ellie? Ellie? Ellie who, Jack? Who? Ellie who? You know darn well who I'm talking about. My wife. I'm your wife. How did you find out? Find out what? Stop playing games. About my life with Ellie. Just what is your life with Ellie, dear? Joe's the only other person who knew... Did he tell you? Joe who? Joe Quinn, the man you remember drove me to work this morning. I, I've never met him. Then how did you know he picked me up today? How? Ellie told me. Ellie? Yes. Where is she? Jack. Is she all right? Stop it. You're hurting my arm. If you've done anything to her, so help me, I'll, I'll, I'll kill you. She's in Seattle. What? Ellie went to Seattle to our house. What, what, what for? What are you two up to? We were going to switch houses. You, why? why? Why do you think, you sad two-timing rat? To teach you a lesson. Is, is Ellie all right? Why are you so concerned about her? What, what about me? I'm your wife, too. Who found out? What difference does it make? Was it you or her? Both of us. What? How? I... I thought Ellie had plagiarized a novel I wrote. The one that was serialized in the magazine, which you never even bothered to read. I came here to accuse her face to face, but instead we discovered that the reason we'd both written the same story is that we were both married to the same man. What did Ellie say? Well, what do you think she said? How did she react? You want to know how she reacted? I'm here. That's how she reacted. And she's in Seattle now? She's on her way. What time did she leave? A couple of hours ago. What? What are you doing? I'm putting on my coat. Call the airport, will you, and see what time the next flight leaves for Seattle? I will not call the airport for you. What? Where are you going? To catch the next flight to Seattle and try to get to Ellie before she does anything desperate. What about me? Jack, what about me? <laughs> Open up. It's Jack. Ellie, Ellie, it's me, Jack. I came as soon as I found out. Please open the door. Where are my keys? I... Oh, damn, I've got so many I can't find which is which. Ellie, Ellie, please open up. I've got to talk to you. I've got to explain. I love you, Ellie. Last. Ellie. Ellie. Ellie, are you here? Ellie! Good Lord. No. <laughs> Joe! Joe! Joe, open up! Just a second. Hold your horses. <sighs> Jack, what are you doing here? It's six o'clock in the morning. I've got to talk to you. Well, come on in. What's the matter? I'm in big trouble, Joe. 
Ellie and Susan found out about each other. Well, they did. How? Well, never mind how now. I, I've just been out to Seattle. And I, back? All in one night? Susan is here in Philadelphia. She gave me this cockeyed story about how she and Ellie were going to switch houses on me and then play innocent and watch me squirm. Sounds kind of far-fetched. It's worse than that. Susan is here, but Ellie is not in Seattle. What? I flew out there. She wasn't in the house. You sure? Positive. What does Susan say? I I came straight here from the airport. Why? (laughs) Joe, I'm afraid to go home. I'm afraid Susan has murdered Ellie and plans to do the same thing to me. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, said Shakespeare. Unless, we might add, it be a woman rivaled. When two people want the same thing, we have drama. When they want it badly enough, we could have almost anything including murder. Whatever we have, we shall find out when I return with our final act. It looked for a while as if we knew what was going on. Two women discover they're both married to the same man which by definition makes him a cad. They decide to take an unusual revenge, which by definition makes them devious. But still, so far so good. Then the plan goes awry. Susan loses her composure and confesses the plot to Jack. Now, we're still on top of our story. Suddenly, one of the participants drops from sight. And now, just as suddenly, we know no more than anyone else. You think Ellie's been murdered, Jack? Yes. But that's preposterous. Joe, you don't know Susan. She's insanely jealous. How could she possibly expect to get away with it? I don't know. But she was here in Philadelphia in my house. She was here when you dropped me off last night. Well, how did she find out about Ellie? Joe, you'll never believe it. You know, they're both writers. Well, they've each written a book that's about the same thing fantasies about my double life. Hmm. Susan thought Ellie plagiarized her story and came here to confront her. And instead, they find out the truth, that it isn't a fantasy at all, and that they're both married to the same man. It's all my fault. I I never should have done this. I never thought I'd see the day when you'd finally admit that. Susan is not problem. She's got no talent, but... I never should have let Ellie publish her novels without my proof reading them first. How was I supposed to know she'd have the indiscretion to write something like that? Well, I warned you this situation would lead to trouble sooner or later. I, I had no choice. I, I couldn't make Susan my mistress. That, that wouldn't have been decent. Mm. We all draw the line in different places, I suppose. Uh, Joe, you've got to help me. I, I don't know what to do. Well, can you go to the police? How? It would come out that I've committed bigamy and and my career would be ruined. Okay, then let's tackle it ourselves then. Now, why do you suspect Susan's killed Ellie? Why? Because Ellie isn't in Seattle. Well, that doesn't prove anything. If Susan did kill her, why would she hang around here? The smart thing to do would be fly back west, wouldn't it? It would have been the perfect crime. You don't know Susan. If she had just gone back to Seattle, that might have seemed the safest thing to do. But sooner or later, someone else was bound to notice the similarity in those two stories and start asking questions, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Susan is cleverer than that. She comes on young and innocent, but you don't know how devious her mind is. By staying here and opening herself up to a possible murder charge... She's done the safest possible thing. Because everyone will reason just the way you have. Everyone, including the police. Mm, Sounds a little too subtle for me, Jack. I think you're just tired. You've been clear across the country and back. I tell you, Susan is capable of something like that. Well, if that's how you feel, then there's only one thing to do, isn't there? Go home and confront her. Confront her? Force the issue. That's the only way you'll ever set your mind at rest. Susan? Susan? Mm. Uh. Oh, Jack. Oh. oh, I must 
have fallen asleep on the couch here last night. What are you doing back? Are you surprised? Yes. Well, you stormed out of here yesterday. I tried to call you in Seattle. There was no answer. I, I was worried. Why were you worried? I was afraid something might have happened. Like what? Jack, uh, are you all right? You look terrible. Were you worried, Susan? Or were you frightened? Frightened? Of what? Did you really call Seattle? Every 15 minutes. Well, until I fell asleep. Didn't you speak to Ellie? No. No one answered. But she went to Seattle, didn't she? Isn't that what you told me? Yes. Where is she, Susan? Where? What's happened to her? What have you done to her? I didn't do anything to her. Why are you still here? This is a strange house, a strange city. Well, where else was I going to go? You must have known I'd be coming back. But how could I know that? Because Ellie isn't in Seattle. Now, where is she, Susan? Wait a minute. Where I... is she? What do you think? I, I... I think you killed her. No! You knew if I had to make a choice, it would be her, didn't you? So you did the one thing you could do so I wouldn't have that choice to make. Stop it. Stop it. This is insane. I swear to you, I'm innocent. And you expect I'm going to believe you now after that act you put on for me yesterday? How did you know she didn't go to Seattle? Did you check with the airline? No. I gave her the keys to the car I rented. Did you think to check and see if it had been returned? No, I didn't know no, you... No, of course not. Why don't you call them instead of accusing me of murder? Yeah, yes, I see Oh, thank you very much. Well? Yeah, the car you rented was returned to the airport lot yesterday afternoon. And my ticket? It was used on the four o'clock flight. There. All right, all right, I'm sorry. So I, I jumped to conclusions. Jumped to... I'm your wife, Jack. How could you suspect me of being capable of killing someone? Even a worn-out hack writer like Charlotte Mountjoy. Oh. I'm oh. married to Ellie... Four times as long as I've been married to you. Susan, don't you forget that. She's she's twice the woman you'll ever be. Well, well then, I won't waste any more of your time. Well, where do you think you're going? It's only 7 a.m. Hmm, the police station is open 24 hours a day, isn't the, the it? The police... Uh, look, Susan, wait, wait, Susan. I, I'm sorry, I... I didn't mean what I just said. I, I'm tired. I worry about Ellie from force of habit. You can understand that, can't you? Look. Look, when all this is straightened out, I'll make some settlement on her, and, and then you and I can be together. And do you uh, think that she'll go for that? Of course she will. All she's ever really wanted to do anyway was write literature. She's always been happy to see me leave for Seattle because it meant she could be alone. That's why I never considered it a crime that I married you. You poor boy. Are you trying to tell me that one of your wives doesn't understand you? Oh, okay, okay. I, I deserve everything I have coming to me. But, but the question is, where is Ellie? Why is that the question? If she did fly out to Seattle, what could have happened to her? What was she supposed to do? Uh, about what? Well, that scheme you claim the two of you concocted. I told you. Go to my house and make herself at home. I told her where everything was. She was even going to have your wine waiting. Wine? You, you told her about the wine cellar. I... Did you tell her about the trouble we had with the door? Maybe that's what's happened. You remember the time you got locked in there? If I'd been out of town at that time, you could have died. I'd, I'd better give the neighbors a call. Well, well, she couldn't possibly be in there. Why not? I I, I didn't tell her about it. I, I, I knew the door was tricky. So that I thought it was best just not to mention the wine cellar at all. Oh, she'd have found out on her own. Ellie's very thorough. But she couldn't have gotten in without the key. And you didn't tell her where that was? Of course not. I, I just gave her the name of our liquor store. I, I thought that was the safest thing to do. What can have happened to her? If you're really serious about us, why don't we just forget about her? Oh, I... I can't. 
I understand, of course. If you ask me, I wouldn't be surprised if she's disappeared on purpose. Why? Oh, women can be a lot more devious than you think. Come in. Joe? Jack, what are you doing at the office? I've got to talk to you. Sure. Uh, how did it go with Susan? I confronted her. Mm-hmm. She denied doing anything to Ellie. Of course. Mm, no word from Ellie yet? No. But apparently she did go to Seattle. We checked with the airlines. Susan's return ticket was used. Did you consider the possibility that she just decided to wash her hands of the whole affair? At least you know Susan didn't hurt her. No. No, I don't know that. Uh, not for sure. Well, why not? I don't know. I look, I believed Susan at first. Mm-hmm. But then something came into her tone of voice that just gave me chills. If Ellie did fly to Seattle, there's no way Susan could have killed her, is there? What's the matter, Jack? You've hardly said a word all evening. I... I suppose you're still thinking about Ellie. I have to know what's happened to her. Do you still think I killed her? Well, there's no proof that you didn't. There's no proof that I did, either. I think it is time we got down to business. Oh? What business? Well, I had a very productive day. You told me this morning that Ellie was twice the woman I'd ever be, and not to forget it. Well, I haven't forgotten it, Jack. And now that I know where I stand, I think I'd better take advantage of Ellie's absence to mm, solidify my position. Well, then you admit that... I admit nothing. Except a very rosy future for myself. I want you to um, sell the house in Seattle and uh, lavish all your considerable income on me. Here. When Ellie was showing me around the house, I noticed the servants' quarters downstairs. I think it's a shame to let them go to waste, don't you? You want servants? Several. But it's not necessary. You may have been able to push Ellie around, but not me. All right. All right, what else? I want you to use your contacts to get my novels published. Ellie would never have asked me to do something like that. I don't care what Ellie would have done. I'm not Ellie. And the sooner you accept that, the easier it will be. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, baby. But I, I don't like the way this picture is developing. I'm not buying it. Oh? Sooner or later, Ellie's disappearance is going to be discovered. There will be an investigation... Are your hands really clean? Yes. To that. I thought we might sit down and invent a nice little story to account for this changing of your domestic guard. And if I refuse to go along with this blackmail? Well, like I said before, the police station's open 24 hours a day, and bigamy, so far as I know, is still a crime. No crime is a crime until it's discovered. What do you mean? No one knows you're here, do they? And back in Seattle, you're known as Mrs. Powell. That's a fiction, sweetie. My whole private life out there was a fiction. You're a fiction, just like the novels you write. And no one ever went to jail for murdering a fiction, did they? Jack? You didn't really think I'd let you bleed me for the rest of my life, did you? Did you honestly think I'd put up with that? No! Oh! I can both stop that now. What? Ellie? Ellie, where'd you come from? It's interesting, isn't it? What happens if you leave two barracudas alone in the same tank? Where have you been? Downstairs, in the servants' quarters. In the servants' quarters? You've been in this house the whole time. On the way to the airport, I had time to think things over. Susan's plan was very clever. But I realized that you just weren't worth the effort, Jack. But the airline said the ticket was used. Mm, I gave it to a very nice and somewhat surprised elderly lady. She was even older than I am, Susan. Ellie, 
Ellie, you don't know how worried I was. These last two days have been a nightmare. Oh, yes, I, I heard how you worried about me from force of habit. <laughs> Our plan didn't work out at all like we expected it to, did it, Ellie? You must be very disappointed, Susan. You were hoping I was locked in that wine cellar, weren't you? How how did you know about that? The intercom. The intercom? Oh, yes. As I said, I've been in the servants' quarters. I've listened to every word you two have said. I didn't expect much from Jack, but I was very disappointed in you, Susan. I spoke... Uh, on the spur of the moment, I, I I wasn't going to let you die. You already have. Both of you. But it's just as well. It was a part of me that needed to die. Ellie, Jack, I... dear, I know I could stand on my rights of seniority in this matter. But you and Susan really deserve each other. Look, Ellie... I'm going to apply for a divorce on the grounds of bigamy, which should produce the requisite publicity to give you everything that's coming to you, Jack... And as for you, Susan, I've been reading your serialized novel downstairs, and my advice to you is stick to blackmail. You're not much better at that than you are at writing, but at least it's more profitable. Ellie, what are you going to do without me? I'm going to pack the contents of a certain bottom drawer and go off to do what I should have done a long time ago. Write what I really want to write. Under my own name. Isn't truth a wonderful thing? When we finally unravel the last strands of a mystery or get to the rock bottom of a confusing situation, truth has the bracing effect of a tonic. The air is cleared, the villains get their comeuppance, and the good go on to, well, we hope go on to prosper. It's not always like that in life, and it's not always like that on Mystery Theater, but this time, it was. I shall return with a last word in a moment. kind of life far too many of us live, a life that was untrue to itself. Through fear and habit, she was not putting her best talents forward. It took a devastating revelation to remedy the situation. We can best applaud her action by not forgetting the lesson it contains. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Patricia Elliott, Charles Irving, and Robert Maxwell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Ah, Herr Dr. Carstairs, it's so good of you to come. Please be seated. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, these three people, I trust you know them. (laughs) Oh, yes. Hmm. We have Fräulein Erika Bauer, we have Werner Kellner, and last but not least, Karl-Heinz Leopold. Yes, Hmm. So, I uh, have here your deposition, uh, your story, uh, this paper. And also, I have on my desk this paper. It is a deposition sworn to by this lady and these two gentlemen. Yes? Yes. Uh, there seems to be an unstimmigkeit here, a uh, discrepancy. A what? Uh, well, it would seem, Herr Doctor, uh, that they tell me a different story. A different story? How can that be possible? Well, they respectfully beg to differ with a distinguished visitor to our country. But they insist that you are not telling the complete truth. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.